Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Josh from Bennett Fishing. Today, we're going to be using the most expensive sonar or transducer on the market. My wife said, go spend $2,500. Go spend the most amount of money you can buy a transducer. You'll love it. And so I did. So Garmin luckily has something in stock. They have LiveScope XR. This thing is an absolute beast. Right now, this is in down mode and it's upside down. But I've been using it all day and catching lake trout. So watch the rest of the video if you want to see me, see the actual detail. And I have the ability to record this because I have a, a GPS map unit. This is $2,500. And they say this is, goes from 350 in salt water to 500 feet in fresh water. And let's see if we can actually max it out today. I'm going to give you a little tip. I can see lake trout 350 feet away from me in 100 feet of water. That is absolutely insane. Now, just a size comparison between the LVS 34 and the LVS 62, I think. Don't quote me on the 62, I'll leave it up here, right here. I can never remember the stupid name of it, uh, the last couple digits there. But they are way, this one's way bigger. It's a lot heavier. I have it rigged to a summit uh, fishing pole. I'll leave the link for this below. And it actually just kind of clamps right on there. They give you like a little rubber gasket so it can uh, uh, mount onto different size um, trolling motor shafts. So, I have mine on the pole. It's an absolute beast. Let's check it out. Let's see if it's actually worth $2,500. And if you get the black box, if you need to buy another one, if you want to run another unit, that's another $500. So it could technically run you three grand for the, uh, for the combo. Let's get at it. And I'll leave the link for all of this stuff below as always. Um, and while we're in the intro here, I want to know how you guys found this video. Uh, if you found it by just Google search or if you found it on social media, let me know in the comments below. I love to see how you guys find my content. Thanks for watching. Let's go slam some lake trout. So we're running, let's do a, like a little stress test. Let's push the LiveScope XR right to its limits. And I know there's lake trout all around me. I'm in a hundred feet of water in a fairly crystal clear lake. Um, there, there is a lot of pollen in the lake, so there is some noise here. It's fresh water, obviously. But let me go through my settings real quick. And this is the LVS 62, I think, because I've been running the LVS 34 for the last year or so and absolutely love it. But there's some times where you need just that extra little punch and another thousand dollars, just a $2,500 just to buy this transducer. And I have it running off a summit pole because I run spot lock. And so I'll go through my settings real quick. So in our setup appearance, color scheme is blue, color gain is 99, color limit is a default. So that's kind of your contrast. Bottom fill is off, trails is off. Noise rejection, ghost tree, and TVG are off. Those slow down the unit. I'm jigging, I want the livest information possible, the fastest information possible. I don't really care about the clarity right now, especially with the test. And then installation is obviously in fresh, auto, and I, don't really calibrate the compass. I, I, people say you do. I've never really need, had the need to. But what we're seeing right now, and I'm going to turn my gain down just a smidgen, is we're seeing lake trout. I'm going to pop this in the middle of the screen so you guys can see this. 110 feet down is the bottom. And I got one at 65 feet, one at 85 feet, one at 110. Let me keep scrolling. And they've been hanging right close to bottom, so that's why I'm, I'm zooming in there. So there's a whole school of them. There's another whole school of them 125 feet away in this direction. It's one of the other reasons I have the pole. And I'm starting to see a little bit of flickering here at 240, right where there's a seam. So it could be a little confusing. There might be fish there, there might not be. Um, we're, right now we're punched out to 350 feet. Now they promise 500 feet in fresh water. And now they, they said the same thing about the LVS 34. It's not really, my limit for the LVS 34 is like 120 feet. Like max, I start losing my little tiny jig. And we're fishing for a small lake trout that feed on smelt here. We're using a little tiny jig. So I'm seeing, possibly fish, and we're gonna hit some waves here in a minute, which is not gonna help our cause at all. Um, 
starting to see maybe a little bit of fish at 320 feet. And that's what I've maxed out today when trolling around or putting around looking for fish. I'm sure if there was a school of like a big school of smelt or bait, I could easily see them at that maybe 400 mark on this lake because it's so clear. So I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna go back to lake trout fishing. Well, we chased it. Got him. Got him, got him, got him in a hundred feet of water like it was nothing. I can never get my freaking net out in time. That was sick, folks. Nice. First leaker of the day. Just like that, folks. Jig's already out. Now that water is ice cold. Just a little tiny one. We're gonna put them right back. There's another one 80 feet over that way. Let's go get him. Oh, there's a bunch of them right there. Now we're in 120. Now if I was using the LVS 34, I would have to be maxing out this, uh, the gain on this really, really high. And now the one problem with these jigs, they do take a long time to sink, but this bait in this lake is very tiny. It's, you know, anywhere from two inches all the way up to maximum eight inches for a smelt. I mean, that's, that's pushing it. That's a really healthy jack smelt as they call them. Recording 835. And let me show you what this looks like on the, the GT54, like a normal 2D transducer. You can kind of see some marks down there and kind of like a little cup of bumps, but it's not, it's not as fun as live scope, man. Not as fun as live scope. And I'm gonna actually go back and turn that stuff off because it actually creates some interference on itself. Now this is in forward mode. This would be a lot clearer. This is actually, this is very clear. It would be clearer in down mode where there's not any backwards interference. So I'm getting a little bit of flash ghost tree at like the 20 foot mark, but that's okay. But the clarity on this is a little bit crazy. So the unit runs a little bit slower when I'm recording, it seems like. So you're seeing a little bit of flickering, but not a ton. Ooh. He wanted it and then changed his mind the last second. And I'm running similar settings to my, the LVS 34. So I really haven't like tweaked with it, messed with it yet. Now I feel like most of the live scope ones, the 30, 34 and then even this one, the 62 have like a little bit of blind spot, like right, it's like stitching that happens like right directly below. So you're better off being in front of the sonar or behind the sonar just a little bit. Now when I'm spinning this, it looks like the fish is like moving away, moving back. That's just because of the angle of the transducer it's only looking 20 degrees so 20 degrees like that and it's looking uh, right now it's looking like this 20 degrees and then I think it's still 135 degrees so it's kicking back a little bit and then it's looking all the way up to the surface so one of the cool things about this is I've actually seen Lakers five feet underneath the surface and 100 feet of water and you can cast right to them you can't do that with 2d by the time you see them with 2d they'd be gone already and so the detail on this is what I've heard is like, this is like 1080 and the 34 is like 4K uh, as far as fine detail goes, but I'm not after fine detail. I'm looking for a fish and 120 feet of water. There's a pair suspended right there. Mm. 
finally. A fish that was willing to play ball here. Sorry, I wasn't recording, but. Way to be obnoxious. Now that fish just burped. And I can see that and I can feel that one in the line and I can see that on the sonar. And I'm letting him burp on purpose here. So that's him at 30 feet. I can't see him yet. So I'm just starting to see him. He's at 15 or 20. Don't want to let them have too much drag. They're so good at shaking the hook. Just get a bump on here for one. I'm getting a bump for reference, and so you guys can see like the scale is actually extremely accurate. There we go. Nice, pretty fish. His uh, his gill side is all messed up over there, but. That wasn't from me. Nice pretty fish. And he is a fat 21 and a half. I can actually see that fish going down. Go right back down the depths that they came from. Go back down and cool off. He's definitely feeding down there. You can see him actually swimming around. So he's at about 35 feet away. There is just so many leg trout in this lake. It's absolutely ridiculous. Unfortunately, there they can be extremely picky. Stick that hook right to him, folks. Don't limp wrist. That rod right there. Horse him up. Another fatty. So, you can wet your hands first if you want. Makes it a little more complicated. Grab them by the tail, because it's a nice, beautiful handle. Yeet them right back in the water. That was like a 20, 21 or maybe a 22 incher. I didn't actually mean to drop them. So I have a pair that's right in front of me at like 60 or so feet. One of the great things about live scope is you can actually see which direction the fish is swimming in. It's not just the line. So with a normal cone, you can only see if they're coming, they're going out of your cone. You don't know which direction that's in. Side scan you can, if you can see tail, but not in 100 feet of water. So I have one, two, three, four, five-ish on the screen right now. And I think this one directly below my jig, so my jig's at like 70 feet right now going down. And then I have a fish at like probably 90. That's gonna see my jig first. All right, first impressions are really good. The LVS62, the LiveScope XR is very impressive. The clarity down at 120, 110, 120 feet is very, very nice. So if I had, was using the LVS 34, which I had with me in the boat, I just didn't feel like switching it out because the clarity was so good at that depth. I would have to have the gain cranked up so high that it would start to get fuzzy. And that is makes it hard to read, especially when you have a bait that's this big and a lake trout that are possibly, you know, this big or, you know, possibly whatever, 25, 26 inches, which is the average, uh, high average in that lake. So as far as clarity goes in that deep is fantastic. When I started putting it in forward mode, so forward mode is like this. 
I'm looking out for it and I could see fish that are 320 feet away, 350 feet away. That's absolutely cheating. Like I could say, oh yep, there's fish in that direction and I can pan 350 feet all around me, which is the saltwater limit, not the uh, freshwater limit. I was impressed that I could see a target, you know, that's this big and I can see him off bottom. Now, if I had flat water and no wind or nothing like that, no waves, it'd probably be a little bit better um, and no pollen in the water. So right now we have a ton of pollen, so that muddies it up a little bit, but I was impressed. I don't know if I would buy it again. I only fish um, three lakes that require me to fish that deep. So when, like when a Pisaki in the fall, Sebago in the uh, early springtime, and then Lake Champlain, on average it gets like we fish between 90 and 120. So I want to take it to those other lakes. We did take it to Sebago, which is a deeper lake. We did fish in 180, switched on 2D just to confirm what we were seeing. We're like, oh, that looks like a big fish. Switched it over to XR and we realized it was a bait ball that was kind of like flattened out. So that told us to keep on, uh, there was no other lakes around it. So that told us to keep on going, keep on trolling somewhere else where 2D would have told us to stop, wait two minutes to drop down there. So. I'll leave a link for all this stuff below. As always, I'm not 100% sold on it yet. So I'll let you know throughout the summer if I'm gonna keep it or not. Thanks for watching.